Guys, I'm super excited because today we've got the brushless 3S Typhon Grom on the bench. This thing's got a bunch of upgrades, but you know we're not going to be leaving it just to those because I've got a bunch more to put in it. We're going to take this thing all the way up to EXB and see if this stock brushless motor can handle 4S. But before we do that, I'm really curious to see if Arma put all the exact same option parts in here or if maybe they've changed things up to save a few bucks. Let's dig in. First of all, this body's absolutely gorgeous. This blue and black color scheme is probably one of the most beautiful color schemes I've ever seen on an RC car. And it is really striking. We've got the same clipless body system that comes on the brushed version and Arm has been doing really good with their clipless systems lately. This is one of the easiest to clip and unclip systems you can get. It just works really, really well. You do have two options when you purchase this. You can get it with or without a battery. I got this one with the 2S 1400 milliamp hour battery, which should work just fine for our initial testing, but we are gonna try this on 3S and of course 4S just to see what this motor can handle. Speaking of which, we've got a 4500 kV brushless motor. It's got a little cooling fan behind it. And then we've got an adorable little two-in-one 25 amp brushless ESC receiver combo. The CSC comes with a new feature called DSC, which appears to be a watered down version of AVC. To go along with that, we have an updated transmitter. As you can see, this button is orange, whereas on the previous SLT2 transmitter, it was black. This orange button signifies the DSC version. As you can see, the model number on it is identical to the old version. However, along with the button color change, the trigger is also a little bit harder to pull, at least comparing these two examples. I'm not sure if that's an intentional change or just a production variance, but this one does feel stiffer. The DSC is gonna give you four different levels of assistance. I don't normally use those kinds of features, but we'll definitely check it out and see how it feels. Before we do that, we need to see what's under the hood. I'm really curious to see what size the pinion gear is on this model. I just noticed one thing. I was wondering what that two 23s in the model name was it means 2 to 3s that's pretty clever if you've never taken one of these center spine braces out before, they can be pretty stiff. It's often easiest just to pull it out with the motor. This one's actually pretty easy. Maybe they've changed the mold, but sometimes they can be really difficult. First look, we have a 21 tooth pinion gear. That's quite a bit bigger than the stock pinion gear, which I believe is 19 tooth on the Typhon. We are using the same non-adjustable motor mount. I actually prefer these motor mounts on this car because you can't change the mesh on the adjustable motor mounts with this cover on, and you can't check the mesh with it off. So it's a real pain. If you ever want to use a different pinion size, I'd recommend just getting the kit of these stock mounts. They work really, really well. And while we're here, let's go ahead and pop this end bell off. Take a quick look inside. Okay, guys, it seems like this end bell has been glued on probably by too much thread lock. I tried taking it off. I don't want to break this before we test it, so we'll just assume it looks like a regular motor inside. One thing to note is this uses 3.5 millimeter bullets. So if you're going to upgrade the motor with the stock ESC, you're either going to need something with three and a half millimeter bullets, or you're going to need to adapt it. Next to that, we've got the same steel spur gear, same steel center drive shaft, and same centered steel differential pinion gears front and rear. It's really interesting that they went with such a high KV for a 3S capable buggy. Typically, for 4,500 kV would be too high for 3S and definitely too high for 4S, which of course this isn't rated for, but we're going to see if it can handle anyway. Assuming this car survives the abuse we're going to put it through today, I've got a really interesting plan for it for a future video, so make sure you get subscribed if you like seeing cool modifications. All right, as we can see here, we do have the aluminum hexes on here. I was a little worried they might cheap out and put plastic hexes on here, but nope, they went with the good aluminum ones, and you can see we've got the full steel CVDs here. I'm tempted to put these Proline tires on now, but no, we need to make sure it works with the stock tires first. This shock does look identical to the full upgrade shock you can get in its aluminum threaded body. The only difference I feel is that the fluid in here is way thicker than the ones you get in the upgrade kit. That's really nice to see because the fluid in the upgrade kit is way too thin. Ah, speaking of fluid, this is not a great sign. Looks like we've been leaking a little bit of differential fluid, which means these differentials probably still don't have gaskets in them. As you can see, we're still using the longer screws for the differential covers. I think we originally saw these in the brushed Mojave. And sliding this differential out of here. We can see that, yes, this is the full fat upgraded differential. Let's go ahead and pop this gear off and make sure there's nothing different inside. If you're gonna pull one of these apart, make sure you're using good bits because there was a lot of thread lock on this screw and it just barely came out. All right, popping this gear off. We can see inside here, we've got just a whiff of fluid, no gasket, which is why it was leaking. Though it may not leak in practice. Sometimes these things will leak in transport, but then not leak when you're using them. We'll just have to keep an eye on that. And we've got all steel gears in here. Rounding out the upgrades are these adjustable front tow links. These really aren't necessary on a basher, but it's nice to see that Arma included them. 
It's also really nice to see that Arma didn't skimp out on any of the upgrades. It would have been really easy for them to cut a few corners and save a few pennies, but they chose not to do that, and I really appreciate that. Now we've got a freshly charged 2S battery. Let's see what this thing can do, and then it's gonna be upgrade time. They say 35, let's see what it can do. It feels very stable. Full throttle. That feels pretty close to 35, maybe even a little bit more. Give her one more pass. All right, let's see what she can do. 36 miles an hour, they're not lying. Before we upgrade this thing to 4S, Arma says this thing will do 50 miles an hour on 3S. Let's put a 3S battery in there and find out. To do that, I'm gonna use this really janky adapter. If you're gonna be running an XT60 with an adapter, don't do it this way. The EC2 and IC2 technically isn't compatible, but if you cut one side off, they will fit together. I definitely don't recommend doing this though. The only good thing about this adapter is that it's technically functional. That being said, it is functional, so let's go see what she can do on 3S. We've got the stabilization set on one. Should give us a little bit of help. Here we go. Full throttle. Oh, that is quick. Give her another pass. That feels faster than 50 to me. Let's give it one more pass. All right, let's see what that was. 53 miles an hour again, Arma tells the truth. Guys, this thing is an absolute weapon on 3S. I can't believe I got 53 miles an hour out of it. I'm sure it could go a little bit faster with some more room too. I can't wait to see what this thing will do on 4S, but for now, let's put the stock 2S battery back in and see how this thing bashes. Well guys, this thing feels absolutely awesome with the stock 2S system. I'm not surprised. I've upgraded a few of these in the past and it feels just about like those upgraded brushless versions. But now I really wanna see if this motor can handle 4S. So let's get this Mamba Micro X2 installed and then we're gonna put some bigger tires on. One of the biggest limitations of these little cars is ground clearance and ground clearance is almost completely determined by how big your tires are. That's one of the reasons I think Traxxas is going with such big tires on their Mini Max and one of the reasons why I'm excited about these tires. They are quite a bit bigger than the stock stock tires and should make this a lot more versatile. Of course, this ESC is also the servo mount, so I went ahead and 3D printed a replacement. I also want to replace this stock servo. We got some really nice AGFRC servos that should be more powerful and hopefully stronger, though I never really have had too many problems with this stock servo. 
Before we install this servo, I'd like to see what's inside. I've never checked out one of these AGF RC micro servos before, and I'm really curious to see how it's put together. It doesn't say it's specifically waterproof, but sometimes these servos can have waterproofing even though they're not rated for it. As you can see on the screws, we don't have any O-rings, so that's not a great sign for waterproofing, though that's usually not that big of a deal, especially on these small servos. They can handle splashing even if they aren't specifically waterproofed. Yeah, you can see there's no O-ring here, a gasket or anything like that, although the board itself does appear to have some conformal coating on it, which means they've at least put a little bit of effort into trying to keep this thing from getting damaged by water. Now let's pull this top off and see if we've got all steel gears. And no, we actually have a steel output gear, brass intermediate gears, and a plastic first gear. That's probably fine given the small size of this servo, but it is interesting to see the different usage of materials. We do have a small output bearing here. That should help with the strength and precision of this. I know there are plenty of micro servos out there that don't use bearings at all. All right, let's get this little guy back together and get it in the car. Well, guys, I just realize this servo is 21 tooth and the stock servo is 20 tooth. I don't know why Spectrum does that, but unfortunately I don't have the right size servo horn for it. So I guess we're gonna go with the stock servo for now. I will have to save this one for when I do the big mods. Now we just need to install this 4S ESC. As I said before, the connectors on the motor are 3.5 millimeter. The ESC is four millimeter, so obviously they don't fit together. I made these adapters. You can either do something like this, or you could solder the correct connectors on either end. It's probably easier to do the ESC side, as soldering directly to motor wires can be pretty difficult. And if you don't know what you're doing, you could mess it up. Now the Typhon Grom is by far the hardest to upgrade, simply because there's not much room under this body. Let me see where I'm gonna put this receiver. I'll get all the wiring fixed up and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, guys, I think I can cram all this wiring under the body. Let's throw a 4S battery in this thing, see if this motor survives. If it does, we'll throw the big tires on, take it off the big jump. All right, guys, what do you think? New top speed or horrible crash? Put your guesses down in the comments. Yeah, I'd be lying if I'd say I wasn't nervous. But here we go. Whoa. Okay, that was not full throttle. Try and get full throttle this time. That was full throttle. <laughs> See if we can get one more out of it. Woo -hoo -hoo. Okay, let's see what that was. 57 miles an hour. This could definitely do 60 if I had more room and more skill. I did get to full throttle there, but not for very long. And I think there was plenty left to go. I'm gonna get the rest of these put on. Let's see how this thing handles the big jump. Not very well. As you can see, we broke the chassis here. I'm not terribly surprised. That's a big jump. And unfortunately that jump's not in the best shape. So I was smacking this thing pretty hard into it. And that being said, before this happened, I actually put almost a full pack through this thing and I wasn't recording. The motor seemed to handle it just fine. It did get pretty hot. That being said, whereas these kinds of upgrades are a ton of fun and it's great to experiment, this stock system is awesome. And even on 2S has all the power you'll need for bashing this thing. And with these upgrades, this is already a very proven system. System. People have been putting these exact same upgrades on these Groms for a long time, so there aren't really going to be any surprises here. I think that for the price, the BLX version of the Groms represents the best value for money. If you buy a brushed version, you're probably going to want to go brushless eventually, and when you do that, you're going to have to make some of these upgrades. The shocks likely aren't necessary, but they're nice to have, but you are going to need the differentials and CVDs, especially if you're going to want to put any kind of big power to this. And this thing already comes out of the box with big power. 53 miles an hour with a little car like this out of the box is crazy. And all you need is a 3S battery. I do like these tires. Obviously they raise the center of gravity and make it want to roll a little bit easier, but they do really increase your ground clearance as well. And if you're going to be doing any kind of real off-roading, I'd recommend picking up a set of these Pro Lines. They're really not very expensive and they make it a much more versatile car. Now, speaking of versatility, I've got some really cool videos I want you to take a look at. 